Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for attending this special virtual field trip today. On behalf of Ohio's 24,000 soybean farmers and the Ohio Soybean Council, I welcome you to a tour of Cooper Farms turkey operation. This is part of a series of virtual field trips that are through Grow Next Gen, the Soybean Council's education platform that I encourage all teachers and students to visit, grownextgen.org. There are lots of good, there's lots of good information and, and resources for teachers and students to make the connection between agriculture and science. Uh, our partners from Education Partners uh, are with us today. We appreciate Cooper Farms allowing us to uh, take a little tour of their facilities and appreciate the uh, participation of the folks from Cooper Farms very much. So with that, I will turn it over to one of our Grow Next Gen teacher leaders, Heather Bryan. Make, make sure you put your questions in the Q&A box. Take it away, Heather. Hey, everybody. My name is Heather Bryan, and I am a Grow Next Gen teacher leader and um, education specialist for Education Projects. So we are really excited to be here. But you know why I'm most excited to be here? Because I am also a soybean farmer, and I am standing inside a, a starter turkey poult barn um, where they're actually eating soybeans right now. So we're really excited to be here. Um, I'm going to introduce you in just a moment to um, the Director of Communications for Cooper Farms and our farmer who is also here today that is gonna take us on our tour. Please remember today to add your questions in the chat box because we are going to take some breaks throughout the virtual field trip to answer those questions just for you, okay? So everybody, let's put a hand up here for Cassie Jo Aaron. She's the Director of Communications for Cooper Farms and she's gonna tell us a little bit about Cooper Farms. Hi everybody, I'm Cassie Jo Aaron. I am also the wife of a soybean farmer and I work here at Cooper Farms where we grow turkeys and pigs and chickens for the eggs that you eat every day in your kitchen. I uh, wanna tell you just a little bit about Cooper Farms. We are a pretty big company that raises a lot of turkey and pork products and eggs for you to eat on a daily basis and um, we're just really excited to tell you more about what we do. This is a turkey farm where they're gonna be baby turkeys. We're also gonna show you some pictures and some video of bigger turkeys. And these baby turkeys are called poults. So if you've learned about chickens, they're called chicks and a baby turkey is called a poult. So we're excited to tell you more about this. Ask your questions. I will tell you all you want about Cooper Farms. Um, a little bit later, we'll even get into how we took a turkey to the White House two times now. So two different times we've gotten to take turkeys there. So. We're excited to tell you more and I'll introduce you to Craig Link, who is our farmer and he also works for Cooper Farms and helps all of our other family farmers raise their animals and take care of them on a daily basis. So he's gonna tell you a little bit more about what he does and his family and his daily life here on the farm and in work at Cooper Farms. Thank you, Cassie. Hey, I'm glad to have all you kids here on my turkey farm today. So as Cassie Joe said, my family, which I have four kids, about, about some of the ages, some of you on this uh, video today. Uh, my oldest is in second grade. I have a first grader, a preschooler, and a three-year-old. And uh, they love coming out to the barn and helping me every day take care of our turkeys. And uh, I also have the unique and fun opportunity that I get to go to Cooper's other turkey farms and uh, show them and help them with ideas on how to best raise turkeys for Cooper Farms to, to, help, to help produce food for all of you. So, so uh, my grandpa started raising turkeys in the 50s. So I'm a third generation turkey farmer. And uh, I still have three aunts and uncles, two cousins, and two brothers that all raise turkeys for Coopers. So it's a, definitely a family affair. So who, I'm guessing you guys would like to see some baby birds here. Do we wanna go through and talk about those? 
Yeah, but first, remember, we need to talk about how you come into the barn. So what are some of those safety procedures that you need to do to be able to come into the barn and keep our turkeys safe? So yeah, these kids are probably all wondering why we're wearing these funny looking suits. So when I get to my turkey farm, I get out and I put on a pair of boots and coveralls. And the reason we do this is because we want to protect our turkeys. We don't want to bring any diseases or germs from the outside in. So when I get these turkeys, they're just hats out of their eggs and, and they're really susceptible to, to any disease, just like a newborn baby. So here I am putting on my coveralls before I can come in to check my turkeys. So, and this is an extra step for me because I go out and look at it other turkeys so like my kids when they come they have very specific clothes that they only wear to the turkey so and then craig, they change it so Go craig ahead. i'm sorry to interrupt you but are you telling me that um just somebody who wanted to come into your barn is not allowed to come into your barn without taking certain precautions first Correct. We want to. We would love to have all these kids on this tour today come out and visit, show them what we do. But because we have this technology now, we can do this in a much easier way and keep our birds safe by showing you without having everybody have to suit up and come in here. Good. All right. What are they showing on there? Is this still the video? So as I come in, I put in another set of boots just so anything that I might have drug in from the outside doesn't end up in the barn. And then here I am dipping my feet into a, a disinfectant bath. It's kind of like hand, hand sanitizer for your feet. Okay, great. And so then we're able to actually come into the turkey barn itself. So we're gonna take a big view of this barn. Does everybody see the gates that are separating different areas of the barn? This starter barn, Craig told me, actually begins um, turkeys for four separate barns. So Craig's going to tell us how many turkey poults are in this barn all together. So you guys might be wondering, how big is this barn? So if you could imagine a football field and add another half of a football field to it, that's how big this barn is. So it's like one and a half football fields. And they usually bring me around 22 to 24,000 turkeys in this barn. And we've got them divided into four pens. That way, whenever they go to move them to a finishing barn, whatever's in this pen will go to one barn, the next pen to the next barn, and vice versa. Because these turkeys will just walk right up on a trailer. That way we don't have to count them. We know how many's in this section. That's awesome. And how long does it take a turkey to hatch out of an egg, Craig? So a turkey egg is in an incubator for 28 days before it hatches, which is just a little bit longer than a chicken egg. A chicken will hatch in 21 days. And a turkey egg is a little different than a chicken egg as it's a little bigger and it's speckled all over it. That's really cool. When I see all these turkey poults around me, I notice that they're a pale yellow color. What color will they be when they are mature and ready for market? So all of our domesticated turkeys are white. And the reason they bred the bronze and black out of them is because people were buying turkey at the grocery store and they didn't like all these little black speckles all over their meat that came from the feathers. So they bred the turkeys to be white for that reason. But you'll notice they're kind of a yellowish fuzzy looking on their backs yet. They're starting to grow some or feathers on their wings, but a turkey comes out uh, all what they call down. And the reason it's yellow in color is because it absorbs the yolk, the yellow yolk out of the yolk and turns, turns it a tinge of yellow. Wow, that's really cool. I didn't know that. So are you saying that the yolk from a, from a turkey egg actually helps to keep that turkey alive after it hatches? Or does the turkey have to eat food right away? So a turkey will live on that yolk sac for three to four days before it really needs to eat something. But we bring them 
and get them to food and water access within a day after they hatch. So after they hatch, they're coming into your barn and I see there's a lot of feed and waterers that are around here. How do you make sure your turkeys are active and moving towards the feed and the water to help keep them um, growing? So that first week we spend a lot of time helping the birds get to the feed and we actually start them in a cardboard ring that, go, that goes around the heaters. That way, that way they're close to the heat and close to the feed and the, feed and the water. So we have a computer that controls the temperature, the lights, the ventilation. Uh, you know, it keeps them warm in the winter and cool in the summer. And it, it just does everything to keep this barn at an optimum environment for these birds. We also have a lot of uh, backup systems like a generator if the power would go out. So these birds are never without power, never without feed and water and everything that they might need. So in the past, a farmer would have had to have taken a bucket of grain and put it in the feeder or gone and gotten some water out of the well and brought it in for the birds to drink water. How does that operate here on your farm? So like I said, that computer pretty much controls everything in this bar. They have 24 hour access to feed and water and we want them to have the freshest water that they can have. So when a turkey comes over here to drink and they tip this cup, then more water will come out. So, and I will actually go through and flush these water lines three to four times a day to keep the water inside the line fresh. Cause I don't know if you can tell that we're sweating in here because it's, it's close to 90 degrees today in this barn, which is what these turkeys want. We start them around 95 degrees and uh, at five and a half weeks when they move out of here to go to the finishing barn, we're at 70 degrees. So we're dropping about five degrees a week. Ooh. as we go i bet by five and a half weeks you're feeling pretty good in here because it's warm right now let me tell you <laughs> hey this is a really good time to ask for any questions um so cassie joe or Jeannie, are you getting any questions from our students in the chat we do have a few questions about how big turkeys can get so you can you talk about how big they are now and how big they're going to be cool. yeah so these turkeys are one week old they're placed in my barn last Tuesday and uh, at Cooper Farms we raise all male turkeys or toms is what they're called and uh, we we get them roughly 45 to 50 pounds and about 21 weeks of age so what Cooper Farms raises is uh, primarily for the breast meat that will ultimately be made into deli meat and uh, turkey burgers for all of you to have and grill this summer. So when you're, um, uh, there's another great question, just because you're talking about uh, turkey breasts. I see a question in here that is talking about a wishbone. Does a, does a turkey have a wishbone just like chicken does? Christina would like to know. A absolutely, a turkey has a wishbone and obviously because the turkey gets bigger, the wishbone is much bigger. So me and my kids like to play that game where we each grab a side of the wishbone and pull and see who gets the, the bigger half. We also have a question here from Ms. Krismer asking why soybeans are important as a part of the turkey feed. Okay, so tur turkeys have a very balanced diet. And in that diet it is primarily corn and soybean meal. So if you kids drive around the fields and see the big, tall plants, that's, that's the corn. And, and they take that corn and they grind it up. And then uh, the smaller, shorter plants are your soybeans. And the soybeans, they take it through a process and they take the oil out to make some things. And then what's left is the meal or a powder. So they mix that corn and the soybean meal. And then they add in a few vitamins and minerals. And then that's how they get this turkey feed for these turkeys to eat. And uh, just like you guys, there's a very important things in there, like the protein, the fat content, 
the carb carbohydrate content, and that all changes as the turkey grows to meet their needs. That sounds really cool. I bet the kids out there are wishing that they ate their protein and vegetables right now so that they could grow as fast as those turkeys do. Um, so as we're looking around here, I noticed that the turkeys when they're hatched are really small and the turkeys we see right now are just seven days old. What's the biggest difference between a just recently hatched turkey and a seven day old turkey? Maybe you could point out to the students some of the parts of a turkey. So yeah, a turkey grows really fast. And like I said earlier, they're all fuzz or down when they're born. And just in one week, you can see how long these wing feathers have gotten. So by the time this turkey is full grown, it will have over 3,500 feathers all over its body. So because those feathers act as like a coat or a blanket, as most birds, all the heat for a bird escapes out through the top of their head and the skin surface on their head. So on the very tip of this, you see this looks like a horn. That's called their snood. And as this turkey grows, that snood will get longer and it'll hang down all the way down past their face and down beside their eye. So while we're at the face, you can see this beak here. It kind of has a hook on it. And, and this is how they pip out of the eggs when they're in there at the hatchery. So they'll pip a per perfect circle around the egg and then they'll break out of it. So, and because these are tom turkeys, eventually they'll get a little beard down here below their, their neck. And my son, who's in first grade, his favorite part about a turkey are their feet. He calls them dinosaur feet. Because you can see they've got these three long toes with these big nails. And then they have this, like a thumb or a, the claw on the back. And he just thinks it's the neatest thing when they stick their feet out. And he said they look like a dinosaur. So do these turkeys fly like some other kinds of birds that you see outside? So the domesticated turkeys have been bred to be bigger. So they try, they'll flap their wings, but they never really get off the ground more than an inch at, a, at you know, when they're about five weeks old. And then by the time they get older than that, they're just too big to get themselves up off the ground. Well, what about wild turkeys? Do wild turkeys fly or are they kind of the same? Yeah, wild turkeys can still fly. I just read something the other day on how fast a wild turkey could fly. They can fly close to 60 mile an hour, but only for a very short distance. So tom turkeys get a lot bigger than female turkeys. What are female turkeys called? So a female turkey is called a hen. And when they're fully grown, they'll be just half the size of a tom. So if this tom is 50 pounds, that hen will only be around 20. 25. Wow, that is a big difference. Do they, is there any other distinguishing factors between um, male turkeys and female turkeys other than the size that they reach? Yeah, so the, the hens don't get the beard like the tom has. And the hens also, uh, they don't get the real red and blue color in their head like the tom does. And then the toms will make a noise called a gobble. And they'll be real loud. And if one gobbles, they'll all want to gobble. Where the hens, they don't do that gobble. They do more of a clicking noise. Oh, pretty cool. I bet the students at home right now should all take a moment and do a quick gobble, 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 gobble. <laughs> just because, you know, that's really, that's really pretty cool. So it sounds to me like females get a little smaller and they're really different. And that's why you guys are raising tom turkeys here at Cooper Farms. How many um, turkeys do we raise every year at Cooper Farms? So Cooper Farms, we raise around 7 million tom turkeys. And then obviously the other half of those are hens. So we sell around 7 million hens to uh, customers all around the U.S. and Canada. That is so cool. I'm just going to take a break here really quick as we're talking about turkeys. I bet there's a lot of turkey questions out there. So Jeannie or Cassie Joe, are there any questions that you could let us hear? 
Yeah, one of the good questions I have here is, what is your favorite part about turkey farming? So my, my favorite part about turkey farming is being able to have my whole family out here and working together. So my kids love coming out here and I love spending time with them in the turkey barn. So I grew up in a turkey barn and I, and I just wanted to raise my kids that same way. So we can set our own schedule and kind of, you know, plan accordingly. The birds have needs, but it's, it's really flexible. I mean, I know that growing up on a farm and being able to take really good care of livestock is important to all of us. And I think that one of the cool things here that we're seeing today is just how great these turkeys are. Sometimes you guys, they are running really, really fast. Um, and sometimes they're taking a break. So take a look, as you see, there's turkeys that are drinking water, they're finding the feed so they can get a quick snack. And then just like a baby, when they're tired, they have to take a nap too. So it's pretty cool to see that turkeys kind of grow up um, like any other animal does. Other things for us to talk about really quick is um, I was trying to, uh, here's a question here about, do you name the turkeys? Why wouldn't, why don't you name the turkeys? So, so because I have so many out, it'd be hard to keep them all separate. But because they are, the males are called Tom, I name them all Tom. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Do you so, have a question about why they need to have heat here? Can you explain why you have to have heaters and why it needs to be so warm for them? So a, a bird's body temperature is between 104 and 107 normally, where a human's only around 98.6. So, and these birds just have that down. They don't have the, all the feathers. So the temperature is very important to keep them comfortable. So you'll notice how some of them are kind of sitting together and some of them are spread out. When they're comfortable, they'll still sit together some, but if they get cold, they'll really sit together tight. So that's how you know, you know, if they're feeling, feeling comfortable or not. And, and that's what I do out here every day. And I'm walking through and making sure they have great access to feed and water and that they're as comfortable as they possibly can be. Another great question is, do they have a pecking order like chickens do? Oh, for sure. You'll find the ones that want to be the dominants and kind of, you know, rule, rule the barn and show everybody else that they're in charge. You'll see some of them strutting right from day one. And that's one thing that a tom does versus a hen is they'll strut. So they'll, they'll put out their wing feathers and kind of ruffle up their back feathers to show their dominance. So their tail feathers that spread and have that beautiful turkey spread, is that a part of the strut? Y yes, for sure. That's, that's one of the telltale signs of a strut. Is there any other reason for turkeys to kind of spread their feathers out and get really big like that? So, so in the heat of the summer, they'll do that to help help get rid of some of that heat. But that's one of the reasons we raise them in barns. So we have fans, and then when it gets really hot, we have misters to keep them cool. We don't want to we don't want to get the bird feathers wet, as it'll trap the heat in. But a cool mist and being in the shade and having that air moving, it feels a lot better inside of a a turkey barn when they're big than it does outside most days. So we've these turkeys also, are, oh, go ahead, Cassie Joe. I was going to say, we've also yeah. had a couple questions about um, hatching them and where they hatch or where they're incubated and how that works. Can you explain that for them? Yeah, so Cooper's has 10 turkey breeder farms where the hens that lay the eggs are at, and they're about uh, 60, 70 miles north of here. And then in that same area, they have two hatcheries. So they gather the eggs from the hens and bring them to the hatchery. And uh, they might hold them in a cooler for a couple of days. And when they get enough, they'll put them in the incubator. And they're in the incubator for 25 days. And at that point, they transfer them out of the incubator and into what they call the hatcher. And they're in the hatcher for those last three days. And that's where they'll come out of the egg. So... Craig, what do they use to come out of the egg? I bet that's a pretty hard thing to do. So they use their beak. And as I said before, they have a pipping tooth and they'll pip a, 
a perfect circle around that egg and then they'll stretch and they'll just pop pop the top of the egg off. Can you explain what they're like what they're walking around on? What is this flooring? So we have a, a three to four inch layer of sawdust bedding. So like if you're cutting a board and what's what's left is the sawdust. So this is what they live their whole life on is this sawdust. And at, between every group, I'll clean this out and put new in. But this stuff still looks brand new when these birds go out. So what we do is we transfer it to a finishing barn and they'll use it, you know, their entire life in there as well. And then at the end of that pro process, you have a great product that gets spread on the fields and it's food for the crops. So it's a, it's a continuous cycle. We're producing food for the crops and the crops are producing food for these birds. Oh my goodness. Are you saying that this sawdust and turkey manure actually makes the soybeans grow? Yes. And it makes them grow much better. I'm watching, I'm looking around and there's some of these young turkeys that are already strutting. So is it too hot in here? Do you think, or do you think they're just kind of showing off how cool they are right now? Oh, they just like to show off. My kids like to come in here and run around, and if they start strutting, they'll try to scare them, you know, to show them, show them that they're bigger and uh, they're the dominant ones in here. I gotcha. So you have these young poults on your farm for about five and a half weeks, and then what happens after five and a half weeks? So at five and a half weeks, these birds are roughly four pounds. So when they come in from the hatchery, they're only like 60, 70 grams. So they grow fast. And then at that five and a half weeks, uh, Coopers will bring a group of guys and some trailers and uh, they'll back them up to the door and they'll just walk the turkeys right up on the trailer and bring them, bring them to the finishing barns. So what we're seeing on the screen right now are some turkey growth slides. Can you kind of tell us about how much they weigh at each one of those ages? So at, at eight weeks, a turkey's probably around 10, 12 pounds. By 11 weeks, they're in that 15 pound range. By uh, 14 to 16 weeks, they're, they're growing fast. You know, that's a big window where they're 20 to 30 pounds. And then that 18 to 20 weeks, they're, they're up to 40, 45 pounds already. Wow. So in this barn, there are really four finishing barns worth of turkeys. And so after five and a half weeks, this one barn will fill four other barns. And you'll have around 22,000 turkeys. Is that what you said? Yep. Yep. We started with 22,000 turkeys and they'll get divided into those four barns. So basically they, they'll outgrow this barn. And then the finishing barn is about the same size. So they're going to gain four times the area when they go to that finishing barn to be able to have plenty of room to grow out the rest of their life. And in those finishing barns, will there also be automatic feeders and automatic waterers? Yep. So we've tried to make this as easy as possible. So when my dad and grandpa were raising turkeys, they both had them out in the field and they had uh, feeders that they had to go out there and fill every day and drag through the mud. And they had waters that they had to do the same. So by putting them in the barn, we've, uh, we've eliminated that part of it, but we've also eliminated the predators and uh, have much better control of diseases and that, and that whole aspect of it. So kids, we're going to go ahead and show you some B-roll from a, a finishing barn here pretty quickly so you can see how fast these turkey poults will grow. But before we do that, let's take the time to answer a few more questions, okay? So if you have some questions, go ahead and share them, and then we'll make sure that Craig has the opportunity to answer them. Hey, Craig, it says here, do you eat turkey eggs? No, I, I do not eat turkey eggs. They say you can, but uh, they're not commercially available, so. I have another good question here about how you took care of the turkeys during the pandemic and how that affected the turkey farming. So we just kept chugging right along. We knew people had to eat every day, so we didn't want to slow down what we were doing. 
So me and my kids, they weren't going to school there for a while, but they were helping in the turkey barn every day. Okay. So another question, do they sleep a lot? We had this question of a few different ways. How much do they sleep and do they like to sleep a lot? Yeah, so for sure, just like a newborn baby, when they come in, they sleep a lot. So I, I give them eight hours of complete darkness in here at night where they can get good sleep. But throughout the day, they'll take plenty of naps. My goodness, so, is it warm in here? We're really starting to feel it. Let me say, I'm glad <laughs> these turkeys are good and comfortable because, gosh, it's, it's definitely warm in here. So are we able to show the students some of the older turkeys that move on to the finishing barns? Maybe you can talk a little bit about what you see there, Craig. So yeah, the, this turkey here is about ready. They're probably 18, 19 weeks old. And as you can see, they get that distinct red and blue color on their head. And then here's the snood hanging down that I was talking about. So that little horn-like thing grows into this big, long piece of skin. And the purpose of that skin is just to increase the surface area of the skin to allow more heat to escape out through the head. And then down underneath the beak and along the neck is the wattle. And again, that's just more skin surface area for that bird. So it looks like a turkey is strutting right there. And when one turkey struts, oh my goodness, maybe the rest of them do? Is it kind of start a chain reaction? Oh yeah, you get that many boys together and they all want to show how great they are. So one gobbles, they all gobble. One struts, they all strut. So students, just imagine that soon these young turkeys that you see here are going to grow into those big Tom turkeys with the blue faces and the red wattles and all those big feathers strutted out. And that makes me think about the presidential turkeys, Cassie Joe. You said that in the past, Cooper Farms has presented two turkeys to former presidents. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, a couple times now, we have had the honor, Jim Cooper, back in the 90s, got to present to President Clinton. And not that long ago, it feels like, in uh, 2014, we got to present to President Obama. And... Uh, that was just a really fun experience. I was here for the presidential pardon for with Obama, and it was a really neat experience. We got to take the turkeys out to meet the kids and local schools and different areas and talk about what we do for as a turkey farmer, just like we're doing today. But it's a fun little tradition to bring turkeys to light and show people more about them when it comes to Thanksgiving time, which is a time that we're all just thinking about turkey. So how old could a turkey grow? If it was not taken to market, like if it was pardoned like the presidential turkey was. Generally, they live for a couple of years, um, up to maybe five or six, I believe. Craig, would you? Yeah, agree with like that? Our, our breeding hens are in the two to three years old, you know, till, till they're done. So. so a turkey has a shorter lifespan than a human. That's what I just heard. So when you're looking around here, students, think about it. They grow faster than we do, but they also just don't live quite as long as we do too. So that's really interesting. I think we've got one more moment to take some last minute questions from students before we have to go ahead and go outside of the turkey farm. Are there any other questions that you guys have for us? I have one here about how do you know that they're growing healthy and strong and keep them healthy? So when I, when I walk through the barn, I'm listening to the sounds that they make. Like right now, they're making a, a peeping noise. That means they're feeling good. They're up walking around, eating at the feeding waters. They're strutting. You know, they're comfortable. If they're not feeling so good, it'll, it'll be just like a kid. You know, they might get a snotty nose. They might get a little bit of a cough. And at that point, Cooper Farms has a team of service representatives that I work with and am one of. And then we have three veterinarians on staff. So if a grower has an issue with turkeys, they'll call their service rep and kind of talk about the issues they're having. And the service rep will go consult a vet, just like your mom might go consult a doctor. And they'll uh, come up with the best treatment plan for, for those birds going forward. 
We've also had a couple questions about do the females have a snood and do they turn red like the males do? And how does that work? So the, the females, when they're fully grown, their, their head will be a light to a brighter pink color and they do not have the snood like the males do. Any other questions? What is your least favorite part about being a turkey farmer? Is it telling them all goodbye at the end of their time here? My least favorite part is uh, washing and cleaning the barn. <laughs> the great thing about that is, is I have a great wife and kids that love to help with that process. It's just a very time consuming and long process to get this barn really clean for the next birds coming in. So that makes me wonder, Craig, about how long between birds do you have to clean and get it all sanitized to make it safe for the next uh, generation of poults that come in? So I have like two to three weeks of time before the next flock will come in. So it gives me plenty of time to get everything cleaned out and uh, washed and disinfected. Wow. So just on average, if that would be 10 weeks, so five and a half weeks for the growth of the turkeys and a couple weeks after that to clean. It sounds to me like you see five or six batches of young turkeys every year. Yep, that's right, Heather. I usually see uh, six, sometimes maybe seven flocks of turkeys every year. Oh, gosh, you are helping me out with my turkey language. I'm so used to chickens that I want to say, you know, chicks instead of poults, you guys, or flocks, you know. So is there any other really cool turkey facts you could let us know or strange things that the students might be able to go home and share with their parents later on? I think a fun one is always to tell, to teach you that uh, males turkeys, a tom, they gobble. So we've all heard gobbling, right? We all try to make those noises. And I have, I love to gobble to my children. They think it's hilarious and I'm the craziest mom on earth. But um, our females, our hens, they click, they make more of a clicking sound. So right now they're all sort of chirping, which they do right out of the egg. But they, as they get older, the females make a little bit different sound than the males, which is really neat. And that's sort of how they know each other apart and they can communicate with one another. Wow, that is some really cool stuff. Well, you guys, as we're getting close to leaving this farm, you have seen all the way from a young turkey poult that's just recently hatched to the one week old poults we see today. We've also been able to see turkeys in their mature stages all the way up to 50 pounds. So imagine growing that fast in 21 weeks, you guys. That's awesome. And it's all because they're getting really good food and nutrition care from their farmer and clean water. So we wanna be really thankful to Cooper Farms and Ohio Soybean Farmers at um, the Ohio Soybean Council for letting us come in today and share what we as farmers do with you. So if you have any questions or you'd like to write a thank you note, hey, just let us know, reach out. And we'll make sure we send a recording of the virtual field trip to you so you can share this later on and make sure that you're talking about turkeys at the table tonight when you're visiting with your family. Any other quick questions? Our last question is how much do they eat? Can you answer that one? <laughs> so when they first come in, you know, they always have access to as much feed and water as they can eat and drink every day. So they're just eating a real little bit, you know, because they're small turkeys. But by the time these turkeys go out of here, they're eating like six to 8,000 pounds a day for the whole barn. And then by the time a turkey's full grown, they're eating all a little over a pound or a pound and a half a day per bird. And then water, like the, I, I watch the water consumption every day. And these poults, the entire barn, when, when they come in, they might drink 100 gallons that first day. And the day they go out of my barn, they're drinking like, 2,500 to 3,000 gallons of water. Wow. Wow. It sounds like water helps you to grow. <laughs> so it's a good idea to make sure you're drinking some good water out there, you guys. Hey, here's a couple of fun things that I just learned. Did you guys know that Ohio is the ninth 
largest producers of turkeys in the United States. So here in Ohio, we actually produce more turkeys than most of the other states, as well as Cooper Farms is the seventh largest turkey farm. So I want you to think about when you grow older, could you be a part of an agricultural company that could help to begin or bring good nutritious food to people's tables? There's definitely a career in agriculture for you. When you think about it, you guys, you could be involved in technology or you could be a veterinarian and take care of the health of an animal. You could be a farmer and raise um, some livestock or grain for turkeys or be a person who creates the tractors. There's so many things that you can do in agriculture that would help to bring food to other people around you. So Cassie, do you wanna say anything um, as we close up here today? I just want to say thank you guys. We have some, uh, a lot of fun doing these things. And if you guys have any questions, reach out. We're happy to talk to you and tell you more. And the Grow Next Gen group can definitely help you out. Yeah. All right, you guys. So we're going to sign off here in just a minute. So my name is Heather Bryan, and I want to say thank you so much. Please go to Grow Next Gen and see the cool resources there. We would love to have you. Make sure you send an email or a thank you to a farmer today. And Craig, I'll let you say goodbye. Thank you all for giving me the opportunity to share what I do every day. Like, I really appreciate that. Thank you guys from Cooper Farms. We're happy to have you here. Have a great rest of your week. Enjoy the summer, everybody. 